Today, we're going to talk about a, a great topic in that mistakes to avoid when hiring an inside sales agent to make prospecting phone calls on your behalf. That is what we're going to unpack on today's episode. And so to jump right into it, I think that the uh, I think the best place to start with this is what I'm calling the hiring myth. And here's what I mean by the hiring myth is that new new entrepreneurs or new business owners, especially in real estate, because a lot of real estate agents have never owned a business before. They've never hired people before. They've never led people before. They're not used. That's a whole brand new skill to the solopreneur who is just used to working by themselves. They manage themselves. And to be fair, they barely can manage themselves, let alone another human being. But the hiring myth is this, that when a real estate agent goes to hire another human being, the myth is, well, I'm hiring this person and I should get an immediate benefit from hiring this person. In other words, I hired you. My expectation unconsciously is that you come into my business and you start providing a value right away. Like you just come out of the box ready to rumble. Mm -hmm. And the reality for any entrepreneur or any business owner is that's just simply not the case. The reality is you will. It doesn't matter if you hire somebody with experience. It doesn't matter. Your business and the context and the nuance of your business is different than what that person's past experience is. Meaning, every time you make a hire, especially with an ISA, you will go through the rubber band effect. Yeah. The rubber band effect states that anytime you make a hire, you will take 10 steps backwards. You'll go backwards. The business will get worse. You'll go slower. You'll, you'll not get as much clients. You'll make less money. You'll do that before you start to get the benefit of the hire. It's the same mm -hmm. thing with hiring an assistant. I want to leave that aside. We're talking about ISAs this morning, so we'll leave it on that. But the thought, Ben and Colton, is Susie Q hires, says to, says to herself, okay, I'm going to invest in hiring somebody to make phone calls on my behalf to go out there and generate leads. When I hire this person, they have this expectation that this person all of a sudden is going to be a rock star. They're going to be able to do things because I've placed this label that they're an inside sales agent. That's what I hired you to do. And magically in my head, you're going to be better at this than I am automatically day <laughs> one. And yeah, I should start getting leads immediately. So let's start with that point, which again is the hiring myth. Ben, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, a couple, couple great points. I think through that of the hiring myth, right? So as we put this person in place, if we don't have a really good understanding of what needs to be done, how do we expect to be able to train somebody to get to the level that we want them to be at? So well, that's just the thing. We don't expect to train them. Exactly. That, that, that's what I'm saying is that, and I'm very passionate about this topic too. Yeah. No one has that expectation. No one's mm -hmm. thinking about, what you're talking about. No one's thinking about a process, an onboarding system, a training program, the first 30 days, the first six. They're not, that's the whole point. Yeah. Is the new entrepreneur, the new business owner doesn't even consider any of that. It's I hire Bob, Bob makes phone calls, I get leads. That's mm -hmm. how they think it goes. Very, um, Colin's probably got a good word for it with his intellectual mind, like very, I don't know, like direct. Matter like I fact, hire human, yeah. human starts on Monday, Monday afternoon, I get leads. That's yeah. what they're thinking when they make the hire. Well, so, uh, it's sorry, sorry, Ben, but just quick thought on that. Like in, in the, uh, you know, the employee world, if you will, right? When, you know, you, you go to college, you learn a skill, you get a degree, and then you go and interview to get a job. And, and it's for the most part, besides the little nuances, it's already expected you know how to do that job because you've went to school for it. Like, you know how to do that job. So your training is maybe just on company policies, how to do X, Y, Z but there's no skill development needed to the extent of the real estate business, right? Like you're coming in with somebody, even if maybe they've been an ISA in the past, 
they, they, they need to learn your process. How do you handle clients? How do you handle leads? Like the, what they say on the phone needs to align with what you're going to do in person on the appointment and how you follow up. And like, it's a whole new world. Our, most people's context of hiring comes from the W2 world where it's completely different as, uh, you know, in the real estate business. Well, let me challenge that too. Oh, this is going to be great. I don't know if we'll finish in 30 minutes. We might be here for, this might be a five and a half hour show. Listen, I'm going to challenge that thought too. All right, real quick. And then we'll get right back to the content. If you're a real estate agent, you're looking to build a listing based business, a business where you can generate a multiple six figure income, a business that doesn't require you to waste thousands of dollars on the new marketing gimmicks, then I'm going to invite you to click the link right underneath this video to learn about our listing agent Academy coaching program. This is a six month intense coaching system that more than three thousand agents from every market all over the country have now gone through. And here's the reality. Here's the truth. I will shoot you straight. This program is not for everyone. This is for agents who value being around winners. They value being in a community of other real estate agents that actually show up, that actually put forth the work. And this is for agents that embrace high levels of accountability and visibility. To get the details, all you have to do is click the link beneath this video. You can schedule a coaching consultation and then you can decide for yourself. So with that being said, let's jump back into the content because let's look at your example of the W2 person. I would beg to differ. I have had many W2 roles where you get hired to do a certain role based on your experience and you don't do that role for quite some time. You go through an extensive training experience. Like as an example, my experience at Quicken Loans, one of my first W-2 jobs, dude, you weren't talking to a client for six months. You weren't touching the computer for three months. Yeah. You went through, you were in class eight, 10, 12 hours a day for the first 30, 60, 90 days before you went into a situation where you were getting some hands-on training for the next 90 days. You didn't have your first conversation with the prospect until like nine months into the game. Mm. And it's like, that's how much training goes into an employee succeeding or not succeeding, right? If you start at Ford Motor Company, dude, you aren't touching anything for a long time because mm. real companies understand training and how important it is and before that per they expect for that person to start getting the company results. I think the quite the opposite. Real estate's the only industry that has these expectations of I hire a human off the street and I should expect immediate results somehow, some way. The the way that Ford thinks that we're not thinking is that what is worse? Is it worse to not train somebody or to train somebody? And it's Zig Ziglar said, what's worse? Is it worse to train somebody up and they leave or not train them and they stay. Oh my right. gosh, Ben, that is so good. <laughs> Say so that one more time. Ford... I, I, I want to, I want to get that tattooed on my back. What is it? Yeah. How does it go? So what is worse? Is it worse to train somebody, spend all this time, all this money training somebody for a very specific task? You're not making money yet and they leave or is it worse? to not train them, not invest in them at all, and they actually stay. Mm. Hmm. That's so good. Yeah, I'd have to think about that. That's that's crazy. That's really good insight. And that's so, from Zig Ziglar, right? Yeah, I the love OG. it. So the first takeaway from the first point is, I cannot stress this enough. If you're gonna make the decision as a business owner, to hire and be responsible for another human being, which is what you're doing as an employer. First off, understand and accept how big of a responsibility it is. Mm -hmm. Their success is as much on them as it is on you. And that is what most new leaders, most new entrepreneurs have the hardest time accepting, that your team is a direct reflection of you. The person on your team performs to your standards, your training, your leadership. 
So for the new leader, the new entrepreneur or the real estate agent hiring somebody for the very first time, it's just like John Maxwell says, it's the law of the lid. In other words, your team can only perform to the extent that you are a leader. Mm. And it's the mirror, like you have to look in the mirror first. Like if you're not happy with the results someone's getting that you've hired, the first question is, what am I not doing? What is my responsibility in this? In this? It's real easy, hire ISA, ISA is not getting me leads, it's their fault. Well, there's a lot of responsibility in that. Go ahead, Colton. Well, there, there's a good comment I wanna hit on, but but another point to that is not only, we, we've kind of been talking about like the skills and the development and, and like the things we need to train them on, let alone like the time that it takes. Oh. I mean, every time we've brought somebody on, like, I, you know, it, they're like, you teach them something and then they do the thing and learn it. And they're like, okay, now what's next? Like we underestimate, like, they're just going to be sitting on their hands until you guide them and lead them to the next thing, you yeah. know? So you, you don't just teach them something and then they go and run with it. Like, okay, what's next? Now, what do you want me to do? Now, what do you want and me to do? And that's because it's not what you teach boys. It's what you emphasize. Mm -hmm. It's reinforcement. Yep. You don't check a box. All right, I taught you the script. We never have to talk about that again. No, no, no. It's constantly evolving. All right, mm -hmm. so let's just keep keep this rock and rolling. The second point. The second point is who should be hiring an ISA? That's the other big, huge pitfall, massive pitfall. It's the agent who understands the value of direct outbound prospecting, but has not yet mastered it themselves. So they think to themselves, they get this idea where they say, well, shit, I've got the money. I can just hire this person to do the thing that I don't want to do, the thing that I avoid, the thing that I'm not good at. And I'll just get out of the, I'll just get out of that activity altogether, which is never, it's just never going to work. It's like, it's you, 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 it's like hiring somebody who you're going to lead them in weight loss and you are overweight on heart medication and, you know, semi-diabetic. It's just, it's not going to work that well, you know? And so you have to first, first off, let me just be very practical in today's episode and not try to be all philosophical. Like you got no business hiring an ISA if you're not a good prospector mm -hmm. because hiring an ISA is to double down. It's to scale a part of a business that you're already succeeding at, but you're only one person. And prospecting truly is trading time for dollars, and it's a highly paid activity, but you're only one person. So because you're succeeding in outbound prospecting, do you then hire another person to double down, triple down? Just imagine if you're getting two, three leads per day, and you can go and hire an ISA to get another two, three leads per day. Now you just doubled your business overnight. But it's not you don't prospect, you don't know how to prospect, you're not good at prospecting. Let me just put my credit card out there and try to solve this problem with money. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's and I don't I don't want to get too far ahead, but it, it can be on both sides, right? It can be the person that's mastered prospecting and the person that haven't both run into the same problem. The person that hasn't expects them to be like, you know, that's set right. these Michael Jordan. Yep. And the person that's, you know, doing really well spends this money and expects them to be just as good as them. Right. Yeah. So I don't want to get too far ahead, but maybe the next point is what to expect in a, like on the timeline and what we're getting, are we getting appointments? Are we getting, you know, leads? What, what, are, what should we expect? Let's get into it. Let's get into it. So, so again, just to re go ahead. You want to add something, Colton, before we get I, into I was, it? I don't want to throw this off, but I was going to say, he was going to say, see ya. <laughs> yeah, I guess he's gone. Okay. Um, That's a serious curiosity loop right there. Yeah, that is. Oh, he's back now. Oh, he's Mic back. Drop. I don't know what just happened. It just booted me. It said reconnect. You, um, got, you got so excited. You dropped the biggest curiosity loop and the, then you left the, the show. Yeah. I was going to say, maybe before we get into the, the process and kind of the expectations we touch on, there, there was a really good comment that I think a lot of people would ask kind of about like hiring and where to find the ISA. If you guys want to touch on that before the process. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Todd, yeah. Todd asked, this is a really good question. Um, Todd and, and Todd, if you're still here watching, maybe we bring you on, buddy. But 
Yeah, so is hiring an ISA from a service, providing them and paying a premium, and they're supposedly ready to go, is that better than just finding one on your own in the wild and then training them up yourself? Like, what's what's better? Yeah, go ahead, Ben. Jump on it. Oh, getting add. me fired up. <laughs> so my experience, there's three different ways to do it, right? You can hire somebody and put them right here beside you and, and train them. You can hire somebody at a company where you're hiring the company and you, you, you have this company doing all the work, all the training, and they just basically send you the lead. You don't even really communicate with the ISA, right? And then you can hire a remote ISA um, that you work directly with. You train, you do that, just like somebody right beside you, but sometimes it can be more um, cost effective, right? Yep. So in my opinion, going back to some previous points, if you work with a company, the, the pro is that they train them, they manage them, they make sure they show up, you're paying for a delivered product. However, they're training for, to create a business model. So they're training them basics, not specifics on your industry. And you can't fine tune things with that uh, agent to make sure you're getting the right avatar when they're setting the appointments or the leads or whatever. Now, if you go direct, you know, you're going to have to spend the time training them. You can really dial them in. But the downside is you've got to make sure they show up. You're paying them regardless. Like you're managing them. You're creating and investing in them, right? And then the guy that sits right next to you, you've, you've got to probably spend a little bit more. Um, and then they're going to have a little bit more glimpse into your life and the advantage. And you've got to understand that maybe that person's going to outgrow that role and you've got to be willing to allow that or, or not, I guess. So what did I miss? Well, I think that's a really way, great way to put it. There's three, there's the, the, um, the Ascension model. There's three yep. tiers, you know, and I think that's a great way to look at it is your end game. Like this is just full, transparent, honest, you know, my thought is that the best way to do it, you know, because everybody's trying to, everyone's trying to outsource everything, right? And my mm -hmm. argument is the same argument to a for sale by owner who's trying not to uh, list with a realtor in hopes to save money. My question to them is this, are you more concerned with how much you pay in commission or with how much you net bottom line. Mm -hmm. And every seller every time says what? I'm more concerned with what I put in my pocket. But they right. think by paying the least to a realtor that that will impact their bottom line. This is the same thing. If I were to ask somebody, level the top tier, you've got a full-time W-2 employee who works in your office, lives down the street from the office, and you're paying them a $50,000 salary, plus, 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 let's just say they end up at 75K a year. But as a result, that person generated 200,000 in GCI to your business. Mm -hmm. How many times over would you wanna do that? Everybody would sign up for that. But it's very Absolutely. difficult because you have to be a great leader. Okay, so then we go down to level two. You have somebody who works for you in ISA, that you maybe you partner with a company like Power ISA is who we recommend. They go out and recruit somebody who works for you. Same thing. You're responsible for them. You train them. You hold them accountable. You lead them. You manage them. You set up all the systems. But you could save some money, and they're virtual. Okay, mm -hmm. that that's fine. And then the thing that most agents want to do is I don't want to touch it. I don't want to sniff it. I don't want to taste it. I just want to pay for it. Well, then you you have to, your expectations have to align. So, so with that, let's talk about results. And so Colton, did we cover that or did you want to add anything to that? Yep. Yep. That's kind of the three tiered approach. Okay. I mean, the argument one would make is ideally, if you're going to really do this well, and you're going to build a business, you know, not a hobby, not this like dip toe in the water thing that realtors love to do, you would have somebody sitting next to you in your office. Now I know that that's, that's not viable for 90% of the humans in this business, but that's ideal, right? You got a full-time okay. assistant, full-time buyer's agent, full-time ISA, all in the office, all every day. That's a real operation. That's like 1% of, of our industry. So let's go to everybody else. 
The next best thing is to probably hire somebody direct for you who is working for you. Now, results or, or expectations, rather. I don't, first off, the thought that you are going to outsource someone, meaning in another country, because you want to save money, it's fine. I'm with you. I, I agree. We have those people on our team right now. If you're going to do that, why would you expect that person to be better at this thing than you? <laughs> you you're consciously looking at how do I save money? How do I get somebody to make these calls and pay the least amount of possible? Well, and then at the same time, have an expectation that they're better at it than you would be a clear definition of cognitive dissonance. Hmm. There's no better example of two things not aligning. I want to pay the least amount of money and at the same time, get somebody who's better at it than me. Like This just doesn't make any sense. To, to have that thought is just kind of ridiculous. So number one, the person you're going to get, whether you outsource, they work for you direct, or you hire the company that does it all for you, they're not going to be as good as it as you are. Or we just talked about you shouldn't hire anybody if you're not good at it. So the assumption mm -hmm. is you're hiring somebody because you're good at this. Now, my thought on this topic is you are hiring somebody for a lead generation activity. In other words, marketing. Mm -hmm. Marketing. Colton said it best on a show later this week. Prospecting is actually a marketing activity. It's not a selling activity. For a lot of people that are new, probably are confused by that. Marketing is the identifying of a potential prospect who could use your product or service. That is what an ISA is. They go out to the marketplace and they identify people that potentially want to buy or sell a house. The selling activity is what the real estate agent should do. So once that prospect is identified, a lead is identified, that's a marketing activity, right? Like, let me give, let me give the best context to the agent who's sitting there saying, I, I, I don't know if I buy into that. Well, would you call buying leads from Zillow the act of Zillow getting the lead sales or marketing? It's marketing. clearly marketing, right? Yeah. You don't and, call... and I think a good way to say it yeah. too is like, you've got guerrilla marketing, radio, right? Billboards. Everybody understands that's marketing to get your phone to ring. Yeah. We are doing one at a time marketing. One that's person right. out of one person. Some people drive by that billboard, hear the radio, and they don't respond. Same right. way with making the phone call. We're yes. just trying to find the people that resonate with the ad. Yes. And, I, and the point I'm trying to make is that the distinction between the setting of appointments and the generating of a lead. The generating Absolutely. of a lead, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, is a marketing activity. Okay? So it is my belief that you hire an ISA to do that role. And going from lead to appointment set is a selling activity. That is the responsibility of the real estate agent. So first and foremost, that is my position on what, what is it that you're hiring them to do? We're hiring them to go out there to find opportunities. And it's our job to do what it is that we are going to do, convert it or not convert it. What are your guys, yeah. what are your guys thoughts on that? The, sa the same way, you know, if you get a, a sign call or a lead from Zillow, the marketing's been done. Now you're switching into sales mode. I think where agents get confused with prospecting it, cause that's a clear distinction, a clear gap with prospecting as an agent, you're prospecting you immediately. Once you're in prospecting mode, marketing mode, you immediately switch to sales mode. You maybe don't even notice it. It's like, that's a good point. There's, there's, so there's no good. gap between it. Whereas with marketing, traditional marketing, there's a gap. Like as soon as you get that inbound call, you know you're in sales mode. Whereas on the phone, you're in marketing mode. You found it's a month early sales mode. Yeah. yeah, it's a really, really good point. And just like Colin does every day, just has these little, <laughs> these little. Uh, uh, Should I give him a little horn blow? Yeah. Yes. Every day. Beautiful. When you drop every time. Some of those. Like dropping bombs. On dropping Bradley bombs. I don't know if you have that yeah. one, but I like that one that you just the horns. You know, it's so true. Mm -hmm. Like if you, the expectations are clear. If if Bob the realtor is going to give his credit card to bold leads as an example. So you can buy like seller leads on the internet. It's super clear. Bold leads mm -hmm. job is to you're buying leads. They go out there and market to get leads. Then they sell them to you. And then your job is to sell. Mm. Cole nailed it. 
In prospecting, it happens simultaneously. But if we can be clear with the ISA process, you're giving your credit card to a human to just have voice-to-voice -voice conversations, which is, which is the marketing. Once they find a lead, I've been identified a lead, then we got to get that to the agent to convert. That's right. So that would be my expectation. Ben, what are your, what would you add to that? It's, it's the biggest misconception. That's they right. want a, a, an appointment on their calendar. Cause that's what some people are trying to sell and right. people are buying and throwing their money away and that's fine. But that is the biggest miss is the ISA is just simply shaking the tree. And then it's your job to take it across the goal line. You're in the red zone. Now it's go time. It's your job, right? Yeah. Um, that, that I think is the biggest miss. Now there, we can get tactical and some great ways to convert those leads in sell mode with a handoff if, if you want to go there, but couldn't agree. Well, more. let's, well, let's, yeah, let's get into practical numbers. You know, you and I, Ben, mm -hmm. were doing a lot of, you know, we were tracking this like crazy and we'll just stay high level. It doesn't have to be super, like we're going to get pretty damn close. So pe people watching or listening to the show, this is probably the most nuts and bolts if uh, for those that are thinking about this. So let's look at a real estate agent and we'll fly through this really quick. A real estate agent yeah. that makes outbound prospecting phone calls can expect to have seven to 10 conversations for every one hour of outbound prospecting. That person can expect if they're doing it on their own to turn about 10% of the conversations into a lead. That person can expect to convert 25% of those leads into an appointment. Okay, so we'll stop right there. Let's look yep. at that same conversion waterfall if you were to hire an ISA to do it. What we have found, Ben and I, is that you just cut all those in half. Exactly. Super so, simple. Right, super simple. So an, uh, an ISA, for every one hour of prospecting, you should anticipate them to have about five conversations, five, six yep. conversations per hour. You should expect them to have a 5% conversion from contact to lead generated. And you should expect to close about 10, 12, 15% of those leads generated into an appointment. So let's get real practical. Let's look at that as a, on a month to month basis. Yeah. Now, the other thing is the conversion timeline, which is hard to, to uh, pipeline maturity. We'll call this over the course of like, two, three months, right? Yeah. So if an ISA is going to work an eight hour shift, 40 hours a week, right? They're probably going to be calling six hours per day because they got breaks, right. lunches. Hopefully you're going to train them after watching this. You've got some time built in your calendar. You got to pour into the person. They don't just come off the, the conveyor belt as they're not a legion. robot. <laughs> they're not a robot. They're a human shocker. I know six hours a day, five hours a week. That's 30 hours, uh, a week times four, 120 hours of actual outbound dials. All right. Times mm. five, that's 600 contacts per month. Of that, if we said 5%, they should generate about 30 leads into your business. Yep. Now people should start exactly getting Exactly what I was going to say. One a day, one a day, one a day. Now you start getting excited. It's like you got consistent inbound seller leads into your business. And then if you have a 15% conversion, you should be able to get about four appointments a month from that ISA's work. And think about the predictability, the consistency that that would bring to an agent's business on top of what they're already doing. I think that is a good, solid expectation. And, and I want to take make an asterisk to what you said of how long do I need to do this before I can expect these numbers? Because these right. are... These are the numbers that we expect to get to, not where you're going to start, Great not point. month one, not month two, not month three. Like you've got to one, build a pipeline Two, you've got to build the skills. And I think you got to be doing this with nothing for six months minimum. That's my number. Yeah. Six months, anything, anything, whether you do this yourself, whether you door knock, you do direct mail, you do Zillow leads, you do PPC, you have an ISA. It doesn't matter. All lead generation takes about six months for it to start working. Anybody with any experience will tell you the same thing. So this is, you're working up to that. And in yeah. about six months, you should be going on an appointment every single week from yeah. the work that your ISA has done. If, huge caveat, if 
you do all the right things. You put in the right foundation, you pour into that person, you're actually leading them, right? They're not, you don't just hire them and leave them on an island and expect magnificent results without you having to do anything with your feet up on the desk. It's 10 steps backwards, just like you said, right? That's, that's right. financially leadership. Yeah, that's right. Ben's got, uh, Ben is building a office on the show live as we're doing this. It's not even that bad, Ben. Don't, don't stress out. So we got all through that in 30 minutes. Colton, I don't know if there's from the live audience, any other comments, questions, uh, debatable topics, if we want to get into it, but I think we got through the, like the clear thing that I wanted to, to, to get clear is that it's such a massive responsibility that one takes in, in hiring a human being into their business. I, I dealt with this with the business partner. He's like, what's wrong with these people? We keep hiring them. We keep paying them great money. What's wrong with these people? Like, like, you know, waving the finger. I'm like, well, just do me a favor. Instead of using your, is this called an index finger? Pointer finger, pointer finger. You start using your thumb and start saying, what's wrong with us, the leaders? If we hire great people and we pay them great money and they're not performing, well, maybe we're the variable. You ever consider that? That is the law of the mirror. Instead of looking through the window all the time, pointing the fingers, the, the biggest takeaway I would give with, with, with great respect, with great love for this industry, for the people that we're talking about, I'm not attacking you. I just want you to consider your role in a human being's success in your company. You have to be open-minded to the fact that to be a great leader of humans means that you, you have a major responsibility in their actions, behaviors, and results. Absolutely. I That'd agree. be my number I, one takeaway. I agree 100%. And I think just even practically, mentally, whatever, belief-wise, making the transition from being, we talk about all the time, solopreneur, right? Where we think about all the money's coming in, it's all mine, right? Versus do I want right. to have a business now? Do I want to be an entrepreneur? Which means I need to invest in this, right? Um, and that's in people, in people that's in people. money. Systems, like, yeah. do you have the money to go to the next level? Um, absolutely. And I think that's the biggest piece. And yeah. it's, it's a complete shift of, of mindset just to polish that off. You know, I, I don't know who, who said this, but I heard it from, from one of the mentors I, I've, you know, I've learned from, and he says, I'd rather have a dime that I didn't have to work for than a dollar I had to break my back for, you know, and Ooh, it's just, yeah. it's just a different type of mindset at that point. It yeah. is. And it's not a quick fix. I mean, we just have to get out of this mindset that I think it's just re typical realtor behavior. Like I'm in pain. Let me give this credit card. And I think my problem should go away. I gave you my credit card. Why do I still have a problem on my hands? I gave you my credit card. I'm paying this fee. You can't buy yourself out your, your, your way out of like the problems that you have because people have, I always say it, you know, people don't have business problems. People have personal problems that show up in their business and just giving another human being a paycheck oftentimes won't solve your problems. Anyway, great show today, gentlemen. That was fun for everybody else in the live audience. We'll see you guys in the morning. And if you're watching this on the replay on YouTube, if you have questions, comments, use the comment section and we'll see you guys in the morning.